a dozen of us, newly authorized volunteer stewards, picked our first rare seed. We might have looked like a random bunch of people looking for somebody's lost keys, but in future decades, books would record that we'd helped launch a community and a mission that would spread from coast to coast and across continents. In time, the seeds we gathered and planted would come to symbolize something new about the planet, that we hold the future of the Earth's ecosystems in our hands. We now know that the natural richness of an ancient prairie nature preserve, like this one at Somme, without skilled care, will be entirely overrun, replaced, and eliminated by invasive brush. Sound a little grim. Let's look from a more positive perspective. This buckthorn-choked woods, thanks to years of stewards' generous efforts, could be and was restored with the richness of a natural ecosystem. Six years after we began our mission, politics in Springfield eliminated the entire budget of the Illinois Nature Preserve System. Now, with more than 100 preserves and no staff to protect them, the commissioners came to us and asked, can you organize a volunteer program? Within a year, more than 60 preserves had protection from little fellowships like the one at Somme. This network built up speed rapidly because some people cared a lot. I'll give you some examples. Recent college graduate, John Sharon, signed up to be steward of a thousand acre preserve southwest of Chicago. He asked us for $100 worth of tools. We didn't have funds for 100 plus preserves. But for John, we said, we'll give you $50 if you can raise a match. John held a fundraiser beer party in the cellar of his parents' house. <laughs> he raised his 50, and now, with 100 bucks and momentum, he approached the forest preserve and asked them to match that. They bought him $200 worth of tools, told him he could keep his original 100 for gloves and a newsletter and other startup costs. This is entrepreneurial America. Gene Farwell signed up for McCormick Ravine in Lake Forest. There, a long-term problem had been massive garbage dumping. Right away, Gene called us up and said, I got the village to clean it up. Really, we said, after all these years, how'd you convince them? Well, my husband's the mayor, she said. <laughs> this is the suburbs. John and Jane Balaban signed up for Bunker Hill Savannah in Chicago. Most sites got permits for the controlled burns that some ecosystems need, but Chicago refused to provide any burn permits and had for some time despite many official requests. But John taught at St. Ignatius College Prep. He talked to one of the Jesuits who happened to have a brother who was a chief in the Chicago Fire Department, and we had our permit in a week. This is Chicago. <laughs> Soon we volunteers were being mentored by some of the most respected ecosystem ecologists and conservation officials in the region. We cut brush. We pulled aggressive weeds. We carefully, safely conducted controlled burns. Soon, a great many grim brush patches like this were restored to natural prairies once again. We developed quite a reputation for public lands ecosystem restoration. Media coverage was great. We got people from surrounding states and soon countries 
asking us for advice and counsel. Some of us were hired by agencies to set up new programs. But it was clear very soon that there would never be enough paid people to do all the work, needed work with all the needed care. I signed up for Somme Prairie Grove as the place where I'd be the volunteer steward. At Somme, we did some good, we learned some lessons, and we were credited with some discoveries. We thought we were restoring prairie, and a number of experts encouraged us to cut back the trees and brush as far as we could to give this prairie a little more size for sustainability. But as we cut, we started noticing that back in that brush were scattered oaks, and we identified rare non-prairie plants and animals. We started to suspect that we were uncovering a poorly understood and even more threatened ecosystem, the oak savanna. Research at Somme and a number of other sites confirmed our suspicions. We said, this is fun. It's like eco-archaeology <laughs> or finding grimy Rembrandts at garage sales. Soon, not just prairies, but savannas and woodlands were being restored with the hundreds of species of plants and animals that made up their biodiversity. Probably 400 species of plants and somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,000 species of animals, many of them rare or uncommon in the modern landscape, most of them admittedly insects, but a great many were species that would inspire the average visitor. For example, before we start, none of these birds nested in some woods. Now, all of them do. But we were concerned about public re reactions. Quickly, we were changing landscapes with the best of intentions that many people had become accustomed to. We worried, could our cutting and burning stir up controversy? So we reached out through leaflets, through the media, guided tours any way we could. We were mostly young people from Chicago back when we first approached the venerable Northbrook Historical Society. At the end of our uh, slideshow, we asked, so, any questions or comments? Happy to hear from you. Anything at all? <laughs> For painful moments, faces registered very little, and then gradually all the faces in the room turned around and focused on one fellow in the back. Finally, he spoke. My dad owned that land, and the Forest Preserve took it away from him. When my dad saw what was happening to the Forest Preserves, it just about killed him. You people are doing the right thing. <laughs> we breathed more easily. The work progressed. We developed skills. Intrepid, no-holds-barred brush cutter Lisa Musgrave, a tennis coach in her work hours, was initially inspired with wildflower photography and then animals. She became a master. But what in the end inspired her most was that she learned that her physical help could restore needy plant species the heart of the ecosystem. She first picked the fringe gentian. We had few at Somme. Uh, there are few anywhere around here because deer ate most of them. Lisa and friends made deer exclusion cages and with the seed that now matured, she broadcasted around and pretty soon the gentians were widespread. So she moved on to Somme's rarest plant, the prairie white fringed orchid on the federal endangered species list. Cages helped here too, because the deer liked this one even more than the gentians. But this one had a bigger problem. 
the small population did not attract the highly specialized pollinators that this species needed. Lisa learned to pollinate with a toothpick and taught other people to do so. One of them, Will Freeman, became equally impassioned with the, with the mission. He was a mu musician and computer whiz and soon used open source software to develop ecosystem monitoring programs that were rapidly adopted by agencies and businesses in the field. It's a new field, and we all help in whatever way we can. But back to the orchids, the people from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service were concerned because they were declining everywhere. Illinois, the prairie state, had the most of this prairie orchid. But even in Illinois, by 2006, only 109 plants could be found in the whole state. Fish and Wildlife encouraged preserve managers to emulate Lisa's can-do approach. That certainly worked. By 2013, there were 460 white-fringed orchid at Somme. Others, other sites did well also. In 2014, the Cook County Forest Preserve Board passed a plan for the restoration, to expand the restoration to 55,000 acres, most of its preserves. With greater resources, former cornfields can have artificial drainage removed so natural wetlands and ponds can fill up again and teem with life as they always did. Forest preserve staff can oversee the clearing of brush with heavy equipment, going a lot faster than when we did it with hand saws, but making community understanding and support and the careful work that volunteers do more important than ever. These days back at SOME, our work is being studied by the Shedd Aquarium, Field Museum, Chicago Botanic Garden, and others. We, the people of Somme, are inspired by the ecosystem to learn and grow. We improve as managers, educators, seed gatherers. We burn, we use chainsaws year after year, now for 40 years and counting. Somme now hosts 14 species of endangered or threatened plants, like this savanna blazing star, here offering a bit of refreshment to a migrating monarch. In the last two years, two species have returned to breed the red-headed woodpecker and the American woodcock, which had not been breeding in Somme for the decades that we've studied it. Our uh, weekend work days of hunter-gatherers and citizen scientists are relaxing, low-key for most people, but the quality very much depends on dedicated expert volunteer leaders. For some examples, chemist Sai Ramakrishna on the weekends plans work projects and kindles bonfires. O'Hare airplane mechanic Paul Swanson improves our invasive species control efforts and writes articles for newsletters. Medical doctor Stephanie Place believes in healing the ecosystem as well as the body. She supervises restoration in the watershed of Fifth Pond. Eriko Kojima recruits and manages many projects, including our annual seed harvest. John Patterson, artist and teacher, added pageantry to our solstice bonfire. Neighbors celebrate the season and brush disposal 
and the ecosystem. In fact, we Illinois neighbors support and restore globally important biodiversity in a few hundred acres surrounded by people's lives. In doing so, we work in solidarity with like-minded people on five continents. Coverage of our work in books, TV, and elsewhere confirms its value. We volunteers can add something special because our time is our own. We don't have to worry about grant deadlines, bureaucratic hierarchies. Some of our experiments take five years, or 10, or 25. But we're rewarded with the results. We believe that we have to take some responsibility because the future of the planet's ecosystems is in our hands. Along with seeds, we spread ideas and spirit. The earth can be conserved only by communities that cherish it for generations. The exercise does us some good. We socialize while we work and compare ideas. We, the people who care, are happy to educate our elected leaders about the importance of controlled burns and the environment generally. If the planet is to avoid a future of ecosystem collapse, it will be because of us, all of us. At SOM, everyday people have fun, working hard, contributing our bit. And one last thing, we personally invite you all to help out by spreading the word or in whatever would be your favorite way to contribute. Thank you.